Hi, Mark Diaz here for 2DAnimation101.com. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to rig your character, but first of all, we already have our character rigged. But I want to show you in this lesson how to prepare this character for a walk cycle. Because really, right now, you can do all this preparation in Moho the View. That means, okay, with, if you have Moho the View, you can move his hands and his feet and everything. But if you want to do a very organic walk cycle, you need Moho Pro to do it very easily. So this lesson is going to be a little bit advanced and will be only for Moho Pro users. And because I want every user, even if you have a Moho debut, I want you to be able to follow along. So in the next lesson, you can use the provided project file. You can find it in the project files that you downloaded for this course, okay? You can just use the rig character, okay? A Moho file. Okay, so first of all, let me go to frame one. And as you can see, sometimes this happens. Right now you can see his chest. I don't know if he's if it's his chest or his neck. Let me hide the neck. No, it's not the neck. Yeah, it's the body. This is how you do debugging. You hide layers to see which one is the one responsible. In this case, I hide the body. And yes, it's the body. So all I have to do in the first frame is select the body, then select the transform tool, and then put the points in the correct place. That's all. And now it's fixed very easily, very quickly. Okay? This happens a lot, so don't panic. Just calmly hide each layer and see which one is the one that needs fixing. And that's it. Now it's fixed. Okay, now let me tell you how to prepare this character for a walk cycle. The first thing is that I want his feet in the ground. Right now they are floating. They are not in a ground. Let me show you what I mean. I can take this bone. Oh, let me select layer Steve and now I can select the, the bone manipulation. And then look, if I lift his body, his feet are floating with the character and that's not what I want. Let me show you the end result we are looking for. This is the end result. I'm going to select the eyedropper so I can preview the character in a nice resolution. Look, if I select the layer, for example, and then just select something else and play it, it gives me some polygons, that's not what I want. So I can preview the character by just selecting the eyedropper tool and then I hit play and that plays back with a better resolution. So you see, this is what I'm looking for, a very organic walk cycle, okay? So let me tell you how to prepare your character for this quality of animation. Again. The, you cannot do this in Moho the View because I'm going to be using uh, Pro features. But don't worry, I will rig this character and provide you with the file, with the rigged file, so you can follow along in the animation lesson. Okay, let's do this. The first thing I need is ground. I need, let me show you the end result. This is what I used. I used those two layers. This is something I don't love about Moho, you, do, you cannot have rulers as in After Effects, but you can work around that by just adding some layers. I added the ground, ground one and ground two. And that's what we are going to do first. Let me go here. I'm going to create a new vector layer. Oops, I'm not in designer mode, so let me go to designer mode. How? Well, you can just press Control Shift D and that goes to frame zero. Then I'm going to add a new vector layer. This is going to be ground one, the one on top. And then I can just select the shape tool from the drawing tools and then just draw. 
a rectangle. I already have it gray, but if you want, if you want to change, if you don't have that color, just press Q or select the shape selector, click on the rectangle, and then change the fill. And of course, I don't have any stroke. I don't want any stroke. I just want it like that. You can use any color. It is not that important. Let me put this below everything. And then I can just duplicate that layer. Duplicate and name it ground 2. But ground 2 should be below. So it's behind ground 1. And that one is going to be, let me use the shape selector tool. I click on it and make it a little bit darker. And now let me use the transform tool. Right now it's behind and I just put it above. Right now it's not in the correct place. For that I have to go to frame 1. I just pressed right on the arrow keys. Okay, now let's put them in position. To be able to put the background, the ground number 2 in position, I need to hide, first I'm going to hide ground 1 by clicking on the little eyes that hides it. And then I'm going to hide the left leg, this one. Ah, now with ground 2 selected and my transform tool selected, I click and then I drag to the correct position. That's the ground, okay? I'm trying to put it in that corner, okay? Now let's do the same with ground 1. I select ground 1 and show it in the layers panel. Then I show the left leg and then with the transform tool, click and drag. I'm holding shift so it constrains in the Y movement. And again, I was focusing on align it with the back of his foot. Okay, that's one part. Now we need an advanced feature. Of course, you can do this in Moho Debut, but the next thing cannot be done in Moho Debut. You will need Moho Pro. You can download the trial version and follow along or just watch this, learn, and then in the next lesson, follow me on the animation and use the prepared file. Okay, so let me tell you what target bones are. Target bones are this. Let me show you here in the already rigged character. I'm going to select Steve and then the bone manipulation tool. This is a target bone. You see? There's a little circle right there. It has the shape of a target <laughs> to which you throw arrows. Okay? So that is a target bone. Let me show you what that does. If I take it and move it, it moves the foot. You see? And the foot is not rotating with this bone. Okay, Le let's compare it with this one. If I move this foot, you see the foot is rotating according to its parent. And that's not what I want. I want this bone to be on the correct position, on the correct angle. And it's very difficult to move this guy. Well, actually, the biggest thing that target bones help you with in walk cycles is that when I bring the body down like this, the feet will remain in the ground. Let me show you. If I take this character, I take the body and I put it down, you see? This character is landing in the ground. You see? That's what I need. So we need two target bones, okay? One for each feet, and also I will use another target bone for the neck. Why? Because I want to be able to do this movement. You see, when he goes up, his head kind of look, goes down. And this is very interesting to give this motion. Check. The, actually, let me press L to use the eyedropper tool and so we can preview with better resolution. Look, you see this motion? That's what I want. That's why we need two target bones. 
I mean three target bones, one for each feet and also one for its neck, okay? Let me show you how to create those. This is super easy. First, we have to go to the design mode to frame zero. I can just press Ctrl Shift D and then I'm ready to start creating a target bone. A target bone is just any bone, but then we transform it into a target. Let's add bone. Let's select the add bones tool and I'm going to create one here. Right now, this bone is going to be parented to the body. It's okay. Okay, so if I move this body, this one is going to move also. I don't want that. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Whoops. <laughs> now it's distorting the image terribly. Uh, let me bring the strength down. <laughs> there you go. It has to be on zero. From this, for this one, you need the strength of the bone to be on zero. I pressed S to select, whoops, to select the strength bone tool. And now if I move this, you see the target bone is moving. So I need, ooh, uh, it's very difficult to see, but right now it's here. Let me select that bone with the repair tool, or you can just press P. And as you can see, let me hide the ground. Right now we don't need it. As you can see, this one is parented. So all I have to do is remember you can alt click to select a new bone. Alt click and then I click on an empty space. Boom! Now this one is isolated. And so I'm going to create a new bone but for that because I don't want it parented to anything I want to alt click on an empty space so nothing is selected and now I can create a target bone. Okay? And then I'm going to create alt click on an empty space and then create another target bone for the neck. Okay? Right now those three bones are isolated bones. They are not target bones yet. Let me tell you how to do this. But before that, remember you have to bring the strength to zero. Right now is they are distorting the image. I use the strength bone tool and then just click and drag to the left and click and drag to the left. And also, you know what? I'm going to reposition them. Let me choose the offset bone tool and put them in place. This is for the right leg and this is for the left leg. And then the neck is right here, I believe. Yes, this is the one. Okay, and there we have it. Now let's turn them into target bones. To make it a target bone, you have to select one bone first and then select its target. In other words, the target bone will be of the calf, okay? And this is going to be the target bone. Now, how do you do that? Well, you just use the bone selector tool or press B and select the bone. And then in the functions where, where it says bone constraints, you can just click there and select a target bone right here. You see? Target bone. Right now it has no target. So if I click here, whoops, there's a big list of bones. Which one is it? Well, I don't know. That's why you can rename them. With the bone selector tool picked, I can just rename those bones. I click on the left foot and then instead of B26, I'm going to rename it left foot. And then select the one for the right foot and rename it. I just click on the name and then right foot. I'm using the bone selector tool for this, okay? And then the neck. I just select it and type neck. Okay, now I'm ready. I select the calf. Then I click on the settings and for the target will be the left foot. Right now it puts it here. Okay. Because remember we are using, let me go to frame one. 
uh, if I go to frame one, we have this offset. So it's good. Now let me use the bone selector tool, select the right calf, and then settings, target, right foot. There you go. Now it has a target, you see? And now, lastly, the neck. I select the neck, and then target bone, neck. There. Great. Now, if I use those bones, I can move the neck easier. And I can also move the feet. You see? Right now, those angles are not independent. They are moving according to the calf, to the parent bone. R let's fix that. Let me press Ctrl-Z. But anyway, the most amazing thing is that we can now have a ground. You see? We just need to fix the feet. Let's do that. All I have to do is select those bones. I'm going to select them both. Oh, no, actually, I need the bone selector tool. Can I select both? Yes, I think I can. And then with both selected, I just click on independent angle. Ah, let's see what that does. Ah, now they are not rotating. They are firmly in the ground. Now let's bring the ground and align them. Oh, I think they are almost aligned. Let me use the bone transform tool and rotate them a little bit. There. Okay, now this character is ready for a very organic walk cycle. Okay? We will start animating this character. This is going to be very advanced character animation, okay? And the result we are looking for is this. A very organic walk cycle. We can do a very simple walk cycle, but I really want you to get very, very professional and start getting very, very powerful skills in animation. And so we are aiming for the best, okay? Let me teach you how to do this kind of animation, very organic animation, applying a lot of the 12 principles of animation. Okay, see you in the next lesson.